I've found that out this week. There is something I came across while I was trying to animate an object that I didn't really want to rig or that would have been too complicated to rig, like a palm tree or like a plant or like, a, you know, something that already exists that doesn't have rigging. And I came across a principle called the noise modifier. And this is kind of what it looks like. So you can change the effect of what it does, but it's essentially a random animation of an object that, you know, can wiggle around. You can make the wiggle uh, stronger or less stronger strong and you can do all kinds of things like maybe imagine like a VU needle that goes up and down in in random intervals if you wanted to animate something like that or you had something like a speaker object that needs to go and kind of show that there's that there's noise going on or there's some kind of movement going on and so yeah this is what it looks like and I'm going to go quickly show you how to set this up because I didn't really know how to do this the object doesn't really matter it's just something you know I just don't want to forget how to do it so here we go let's grab ourselves a brand new scene in Blender. And the object doesn't really matter either. We could use the cube. I, I think I'm gonna go and stick with that cylinder that I've just shown you there and just grab myself a new mesh and make a cone. It was a cone actually, not a cylinder. It doesn't have to be that detailed. I mean, it can be, but it doesn't really have to be. So I'm gonna go and turn this down from 32 vertices to maybe 12. That's probably enough. And the depth or rather the height is fine. I'm just going to turn the radius down to maybe 0.5 so that it makes it a little bit slimmer here. I'm also going to go and move this guy up. So currently he's kind of intersecting or it's right in the center of the plane there. So if I go GZ1, then he's resting right on the bottom plane there. And so that it behaves more maybe like a tree in the forest. I want to put the origin point right at the bottom center. And I do that via object set origin to 3D cursor, which is happens to be in the very center position here. I might also give this guy a little material just so that it's not gray on gray. I might just go and turn this one. I'll maybe call it a blue. Let's make it a blue cylinder. Why not? And since I'm not going to render this, I'm just going to go over here into the options. Once I've created a material, there's the viewport display. And down here, I'm going to pick uh, something nice, something like a maybe like a blue, make it a little bit darker. Actually, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, something like that. It doesn't really matter all that much. I just, you know, we see so many gray objects when we do 3D stuff. It's kind of nice to get a little bit of color into our working um, into our working bits and pieces here. I need the timeline and I don't want to preview the whole 250 default frames. I'm going to just set that to 100, but that really depends on the animation project. So I'll just, I'll just stick with 100 and then we'll start animating with this noise modifier. So this is a thing that is not to be found in the regular modifier palette here. There's no noise modifier in here as far as I can see. But uh, I came across this because I watched a video about somebody who introduced the noise modifier in, I think, Cinema 4D or Maya or Modo, somewhere like that. And I thought, noise modifier, I must find out where that is. And the documentation of Blender actually told me, yeah, it's not here, it's somewhere else. And that is in the graph editor. So we're gonna have to go and left click and drag, make ourselves a new viewport up here. And one of them, we're going to turn into our regular, you know, looking at viewport. And the other one here, we're going to turn into a graph editor, namely like that. It looks a little bit scary, but essentially it's the timeline displayed with other values here on the right hand side. And much like with other Blender panels, if we press the N key on the keyboard, then this little parent item here, the, the little tool shelf type thing comes up and we need that open. So right now we don't really see anything. Uh, I'm going to go and control A, first of all, on my object and go and uh, apply all transformations. Like in case I, I did anything like uh, transformation rotation scale, I'm going to apply that so that it's kind of evened out and set to zero here. And then I'm going to go with my object selected and hovering over this viewport here on the left hand side, I'm going to press the I key. And that now, if you're familiar with animations, will set a keyframe. We only need one keyframe for this. And I'm going to use one for location and rotation because I'm going to animate all these values. But I need to create one keyframe so that the noise modifier can be applied. So we'll do that. And then all of a sudden this happens. So there's a little thing here that opens up. There's also the, the tool shelves now populated, which is awesome. That's kind of what we want. This here I can open up now and it will show me all the channels essentially or all the properties of my object that I can animate or that are now keyframed essentially, which is the X, Y and Z location and it's also the X, Y and Z rotation. Now I don't really 
I'm going to animate my little corn here in both X and Y in Blender, but I'm not going to uh, do this in the Z location. So I'm not, I'm not going to use this. So I can right click on this and delete this channel out. So I have a little bit less to see. Likewise, I'm going to go and use the Y and X rotation, like so that the object spins around like this, but I don't need the Z rotation. So I'm going to go and delete that channel as well. It just makes my life a little bit easier because it's less to do. Let's start with the X location. So that's anything that's along the red line here. So if I go and hit GX, then this is what that noise modifier is going to do for me, just on that X location channel. And to do that, I'm going to go over here to modifiers and add myself a modifier that can now be animated or yeah, animated with the graph editor. So there's all kinds of things here, cycles, noise, limits, built in function generator and so forth. I'm going to use the noise modifier and that'll create something like that. I'm going to make it a bit stronger in a minute so that we can see it. If So this is now the a kind of a random motion that is applied in the X transformation axis. So if I hit play, then you can see that this is what my object does. And it's kind of kind of cool. And it'll do that for as many frames as there are. If this is a bit too strong or not strong enough, I can crank up the strength. So that makes this amplitude here a lot higher. And as a result, my little object goes, you know, a lot more erratic back and forth. So that's the strength. There's also the scale I can I can change. And that's essentially how far this graph is stretched out. So it's randomly generated. And if I stretch it out, if I make it larger, then it's uh, there's there's less ups and downs in this thing. So, you know, this is this is kind of nice here. So it's it's still a bit strong, of course. So maybe I'll go and set it to well, let's go and set it to 10 for now. And the strength itself, if I wanted to have that to be like a subtle animation, that probably goes for something like 0.1 or maybe even something even more subtle, like, you know, 0 0.01. Uh, so that it's just that there's just a bit of subtle movement going in there. It depends on what we're going for. But if you come to dealing with very, very small numbers, it's kind of difficult to hack them in. So if I go and leave that on one and this is too strong for me, I can use this influence value down here. If I go and say the influence of whatever the numbers are is now 10, uh, then I can probably go and, uh, uh, oh, no, actually that's not how it works. Zero point, uh, was that 0 0.1? Like so. Uh, now my numbers that I essentially type in here can be larger. It's just a translational, calculational thing. Depends what we, what we want here. I might just leave this on point 0.1. So everything's basically divided by uh, 10, which is kind of cool. So I can go uh, for strength. I can go maybe use five, something like that. And scale, same thing. If I go uh, 50 instead, then, um, you know, that, that goes that goes larger. If I go smaller, then he goes back to erratic. So maybe I'll go leave that in 10 just so that we can see that value. And maybe strength, I might put that to 1. There's also the phase. So the phase probably makes more sense if I go and make this a bit... Uh, Nope, hang on. If I make that a bit uh, stronger, you can see what happens if I tweak the phase value that changes the graph itself. So it'll happen as well when it when the strength is smaller. But, you know, just so that you can see that as I move that value, the type of movement, the type of randomization changes. That's that's what it does. It's kind of kind of nice to to know that I'm going to put this back to one. I'm going to put the strength also back to one so that we have this subtle type movement here. And that's my noise modifier set up for the X axis. So if I wanted to use the Y axis as well, so that it moves in both the X and Y direction simultaneously, I can go and copy all my settings from here onto this value here, which is currently hasn't got anything. And the copy and paste, that's a little bit of a hidden menu that kind of caught me out. That's on the on the top right here, these two things. This is essentially saying copy, and this is essentially saying paste. But you wouldn't really know that. But you know, we, because in Blender, we're all hip and exciting. We don't really do many pop up menus. We sometimes do, but you know, we don't, we don't always. So this is one of those occasions. So this means copy whatever selected here under X location, I'm going to copy this out. Then I'm going to change to my Y location and then I'm going to go and paste that in. And the exact values that I had in X are now copied into Y. I say the exact same ones because I might not want them to be exactly the same. I might 
want the tendency to be exactly the same, uh, but I don't want them to be exactly the same because you can tell now that the cone isn't going uh, in the X and the Y. It almost looks like it's going in a, in a 45 degree angle, like diagonally here. And that's not really what I want. But without changing the scale and strength and so forth, I could just change the phase on the Y location into something else. And then that'll create something like a random movement in in both directions and i don't see that there's a similarity anymore they don't you know go into the same direction man is middles top of the afternoon good to see you so that's that and we can do the same thing and apply that to the rotation so then that thing also rotates in both directions so let me do that uh, go to x euler rotation paste that value and now it tilts and it's kind of cool i'm going to go and uh, randomly just tweak the phase a little bit doesn't really matter to what and the same thing goes into y put that into y tweak the phase even more and now we have this little subtle exciting animation without actually having worked all that hard at keyframe animating this thing uh, out of the box and i find that really exciting i've used this same effect together with a mesh deform cage on the outside of the object I wanted to animate. And I also use this effect in conjunction with a soft body dynamic that I might explain in another video in which you can basically uh, put a sphere or a cube or whatever around the object that you'd like to animate, like a complex tree structure or something. You put a, an object on the outside of that and then put a soft body animation on that so that it kind of wobbles around as if it was a hot air balloon or something. And then you add Add the mesh deformer to this object that you actually want to animate and say this is the source deform the object like what I'm doing to the outside which is complex physics and it works it, it, the effect is much like the foliage animation that we have in video games so I thought I'm going to share this with you because this is kind of a neat effect and I've only just found out about it